Today on This Week in Startups, Anthony Casalina, the founder and CEO of Squarespace, one of my favorite sites, uh, is joining us. I'm so happy to have him on the program, finally. And we'll take your startup questions on a very special Ask Jason. Kathy Choi is with us for the news. Her fans will be happy. And Tyler, oh, Tyler, please give us an insight this week on This Week in Startups. That's what it's all about, man. Hey, Sid. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Welcome to another episode of This Week in Startups. Tyler, how are you doing? I'm good. You're good? Yeah. <sighs> the Knicks beat the Heat last night. Mmm, I'm in a good mood. Mmm, <laughs> what's up with uh, the Knicks, baby? What's up, LeBron? What's up, LeBron? Couldn't play in New York? Couldn't take the Heat? Had to go to Wade's team? Mmm, Amare is real. Amare Stoudemire, huh. best player in the league right now, on the New York Knicks. I am happy. You can tell, basically, the last 10 years I've been suffering from massive depression mm -hmm. because of the Knicks. And now I'm back. And Mahalo, huge pivot at the DLD conference in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, man, did I get such great feedback to that. Mm -hmm. um, great feedback to that presentation. And we're going to actually, on an, on an upcoming episode, this is a special episode that's coming, we're going to break down my performance. It's going to be a shark tank mm -hmm. where Tyler mm -hmm. and a very special guest, who we're not going to say, uh -huh. comes back to the program yes. to break down my performance and actually give numbered scores. That's coming up on a very special episode. You're only going to get that. We're not posting it to YouTube. You're only going to get it if you subscribe to the iTunes feed. This is my way to goose the iTunes. Ah. If you are a member of the iTunes feed, if you subscribe, then you will get the special episodes. Special episodes are not being put on YouTube. We have such an amazing lineup of people. Producer Rob, who is terrified of me. Yep terrified because I told him I judge you on one thing the guests you get for this program he is terrified of me and finally he is delivering today we got the founder and Squarespace. CEO of Squarespace everybody knows I love Squarespace I use Squarespace for the launch conference incredible product uh, coming up as well the founder of Sticky Bits uh, the CEO of dot, uh, co, dot co is mm. coming uh, Ian Rogers of Topspin Media uh, Citizen Logistics Hashables founder about Me's founder and uh, VC Tony Conrad, Blair Harrison of Frequency, uh, Anthony uh, Dunn, the CEO of Bonobos, you know, the $170 billion investment in the, you must love this, it's pants. Yeah. I mean, Bonobos, <laughs> Bonobos must be sending you free product now that they've seen what you've done for Blank Label. Uh, hey, CEO and co-founder of Living Social coming, huh? How about the founder of Zendesk? How about the founder of Red Beacon? How about the founder of Discuss? Check, 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 check. This is why you need to subscribe to the iTunes feed. Go to the iTunes store, type in Genius or This Week in Startups to subscribe. The genius of Tyler, of course. And I've been handed my piece of paper here of who I will approve for the show. Uh, Reed Hoffman of LinkedIn, approved. Daniel Matz, founder of Jumio. I haven't heard of that. No. I have to look. Th this is the science, by the way, folks. This, this is, is, guys this is how it works. John Crawford, founder of Store NVY. I haven't heard of that. No. If I don't, I haven't heard of it, and I don't right. know the person's name, I just said no. Jonathan Assi, founder of eToro. Toro's my dog's old name. I'm going to put that as a maybe because there's a Toro in it. Kathy Savitt, founder of Plixi, formerly Tweet Photo, acquired by Lockers for $10 million. I feel like that's on here because she's a woman, maybe. Like, I've never heard. Have you ever heard of this? Yeah. Are we trying to just get the no. the female number up or something? No. You think that'd be a good guest? Yeah. Okay, I say yes. Tyler says yes. Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon. I've heard of that guy as well. Who is that? But he wouldn't be that right, good I'm gonna of a say, guest. I'm going to say I'm going to go out on him and say yes. I don't know. Reed yeah. Hoffman, yes. Kathy Savage, <laughs> yes. From Plexi. Jeff Be Bezos, yes. John Crawford from Store Envy, no. Daniel Matz, founder of Jumio, no. And Jonathan Assi, founder of Etoro, maybe. That's it. I'm going to be upfront about it. If I haven't heard of your company, and it's not notable. I'm sorry to the people I said no to today, but I, I have to, I'm trying to keep the level of guest very high because the level of guest is why people tune in. And you know what? Quality 
is what makes for a great product. And speaking of quality, MailChimp, MailChimp, MailChimp. I sent a letter out to the Jason Nation yesterday. You know I send uh, to the launch conference. Mm -hmm. Launch conference on fire. Microsoft sponsoring, you may have heard of them. Uh, uh, the Google. And of course you're, you're- Second market. You're entrusting the notifications that you use to- MailChimp, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when I have something to say, when I'm writing three or 4,000 words, yeah. three or four beautifully crafted words, right. You know what I use? Mailchimp. You know, Mailchimp. I, you, you know why you like it so much? <laughs> no. I told I, my I, daughter yesterday, because now she goes, yeah. she knows how to, what the monkey says, E E E. Yeah. Yeah. So I come home and my yeah. wife has taught her to say E E E. Uh -huh. So I come home from Germany, I'm like, oh, this is great. Yeah. So she, I say, uh, Jade goes, oh, watch London. Mm -hmm. What does the monkey say? She goes, E E E. And I said, E E E. Mm -hmm. And she goes, E E E. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> I can't wait to have her on the program. And I can't wait to log into the beautiful, buttery Mailchimp. Uh, interface. I just love using that program. It is so awesome. It's actually like you Twitter like space. it so much because you used something else before it. Yeah, I mean, I've used I've used the fail, the and now I'm using the win. Right. I used the fail before. Yes. I don't want to make this a commercial for Squarespace, but they are similar companies in yes. that they both build a beautiful, elegant product. Yes. In fact, they probably work together really well. I mean, I'm, I'm using them mm -hmm. together. Uh, not that there's any integration, but. Mailchimp does have a $1 million integration fund. It's basically like Y Combinator. You pitch them on a great idea, they give you money. Except they don't take the 6% like Paul Graham does. Not that Paul Graham doesn't own, deserve 6%. Let me tell you something, there's some entrepreneurs out there that should give Paul Graham 60%. Mm -hmm. uh, he's good at what he does. And Mailchimp is the best at what they do. Uh, just like Paul Graham is the best at what he does. Just like Squarespace is the best at what they do. Uh, go pitch them on integrating Mailchimp into something. They'll give you money, you do it, you become famous, and life is good. Give me one, Tyler. <laughs> no. Come on, Tyler. Give me one. <laughs> <laughs> give me one. Yeah. Give me an. <laughs> Tyler doesn't have it in him. Sorry, he's just too serious. He takes himself too serious. I don't take myself seriously. Nobody else does. Why should I? Thank you, Melchimp, from the bottom of my heart for supporting independent media like this week in startups. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, Anthony Casalina uh, is not a member of the Colombo crime family. He was not picked up in that raid of all the Italian guys. You, heard, you should see that the cover of the Wall Street Journal. No. I picked up the Wall Street Journal last week, yeah. and I'm like, this is, I feel like it's, a, it's, a, it's the onion or something. They got a picture of six Italian guys, and it's like, the caption says, Vinny Galluccio, Vinny Two Boots Galluccio, Tony Bag of Donuts, <laughs> Benicio. I was like, what? Is this an episode of The Sopranos? And I'm like, just thought to myself, it's so cute that there's still a mafia. Right, like, right, right. It's so cute that somebody's called Tony two times, like, right. Salvatore Tony two times. You know, it's like, Oh, let those guys do what they want to do. I mean, what are they doing? You know, like <laughs> shaking some people. Anyway, uh, Anthony uh, started the company in 2003. I didn't take him seriously. Probably e emailed me once, and I was like, whatever, kid. Um, Twenty thousand dollar investment from his pops. Uh, he's been developing software since the, the age of 15. That would be not to interrupt his intro, but that would be a brilliant little viral video for uh, Kickstarter, the places that like, raise money yeah. for people who need yeah. to raise money. Yeah. And the mafia guy comes in and he wants to loan him money and he gets on the website he's like, no, I got it. this is all good. I got <laughs> um, and this company is on fire and uh, they've raised 30, they've raised 38.5 million uh, from Excel and Index Ventures. I was just at the Excel dinner. Me? Yeah. This is one table. Yes. Kai Fu Lee, the famous guy from China who worked for Microsoft and Google, they sued you. Mm -hmm. Kai Fu Lee, who's running like a Y Combinator thing. Guy Asaria, Madonna's yeah, manager. Yeah. Osari, yeah. Jim Breyer from Excel, mm -hmm. David Kirkpatrick from the Facebook Effect, and me. I mean, it's a pretty power table. Uh, so he's got Excel on his side. Index Ventures, Danny Reimer, our friend. Company valued over $100 million, 46 employees. Blah, 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 blah. Who's using Squarespace? GE, Mark Echo, Kevin Rose, Jason Calacanis, and Kevin Pollack. Hey. Recently added social, Kevin Pollack, the poker player. Uh, recently added social integration, GoWalla, Facebook. Just added iPad and offer now, blah, 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 blah. PR marketing. I gotta talk to Rob about this PR marketing. He gives me like 100 bullet points. That's obviously coming from the PR people. He's gotta learn what's PR and what's real. Uh, but anyway, this is the Real Deal Company. Anthony, welcome to the program. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Um, my God, it, you, you have had tremendous success with this company. When you started it, did you ever think that uh, a, basically like GeoCities on crack was necessary? I mean, what in your mind made you think that people needed an easy website building tool in 2003, 2004, when everybody's done this already? I mean, you, you, you come up to the yeah. plate and you get a bat, you get a swing at bat and you're gonna pick something that's ever, everybody's done already and then you did it excellently. What was in your mind? I mean, it was, it, it was something along those lines actually. I, um... 
I just wasn't happy with what was out there. I mean, I, I went to make a site for myself and it was like, okay, integrate WordPress, some photo gallery thing, upload it with an FTP, you have separate stats packages, it's on like GoDaddy or something. I, I just, it wasn't the kind of thing that related to me. I just wanted something really integrated, something really easy to use. I just wanted, I just wanted it to look good. Uh, and, and look good it does. I've been using the product for a couple of months now. Um, paid customer and we're doing launch on it. Very elegant, like we built the site without any, um, really without any designers. We just said like, hey, pick the mm -hmm. white template, et cetera. Um, how much do you charge for the product? Um, it's, is, it's, yeah, and, and, and how many people are using it today? I mean, tens of thousands. We don't release the numbers, right. but um, it's between, hold on, my screen just locked down. No problem. Sorry. It's between um, 12 and 40 bucks a month. 12 and Build 40 bucks a month. Monthly or annually. Yeah. Um, so it's very affordable. It's not expensive. Yeah. Nope. Um, and like you said, it, one of the things I like about it is like if I, w I could see like if you were going to give this to somebody like a small business owner, it, you don't want to have to install Google Analytics for them. You don't want, it's like all these different features, like a message board it's got, it's got a blog. What are all the, the, the features of the, of the product that you added and why? Uh, because that seems to be one of the nice things about it is that if you want to add something like a message board or a mm -hmm. blog or metrics, it's just there. It's just all there, right? It's all in one platform. So, I mean, the original premise was something along the lines of like Lego bricks for the web, where you've got these little building blocks and you snap them together and they all work together and there's no integration hassles and they all come in. I mean, it, it has a lot of different modules, but some of the primary ones are a blog, a photo gallery, forums, things like that. But these things are, you know, we, when we say we have something in there, like when we say we have a blogging product, we don't, we try not to like half ass it. You know, the blogging product is a real blogging product. It, you know, has everything you would expect from a blogging product. So, you know, you don't actually need to like go anywhere else to get that. Um, and you get the product, I think, to a couple of thousand people and then you start raising money. Is that how it went down? Um, no, I mean, so I've been running it for seven years now. Um, yeah. in, in the beginning, you know, it started, you know, it started in 2004, I launched it. Well, okay, it started in 2003. I spent about eight months writing it. Um, launched in 2004, had this like, you, you, you said 20, it was about 30 grand for my dad. Um, and I just, you know, I just knew it was something good and I started marketing it with uh, Google AdWords. So in month one, I probably spent 400 bucks on AdWords, got three customers, then I took that money, funneled it back in, spent like 500 bucks on AdWords, got six more customers, and just did that year after year after year and just kept building it up into something better. And um, you know, we, we from, from a very early point, focused on the paid customers because we felt that, you know, this was a thing of quality and that was our sweet spot. We weren't interested in having the most number of users. We were interested in having just people who really wanted that quality and were willing to pay for it. Hey, uh, Producer Rob, can you ask uh, Crew to put my, um, my launch login on a piece of paper for me because I'm going to log in and show some of the features. Uh, so you start doing SEM. You get mm -hmm. the virtuous cycle going. You yep. start acquiring customers for 100 a pop or something. Um, cost to acquire back then, I actually don't recall. It's changed a lot over time. It was probably lower than that. Actually, we, we did our AdWords back then under the keyword blog. We never did stuff under like build a website. So we were right. kind of focused on that because I think back at the time that meant to people, you know, I can publish something online. Right. And whereas building a website might have been something more difficult for them. So yeah, it just really built up organically um, via that method. And uh, this is something I saw Mark Jeffrey make a nice comment on the things. What you can build in a couple of hours on Squarespace is probably what Razorfish, when we had Craig Canarick on back in the day, um, they probably would charge you a million dollars to build a website with that sophistication. Um, so uh, what were the other drivers of the business? And, and why didn't you go um, freemium? Uh, why didn't you go like free and ad supported? Because obviously you have businesses out there like WordPress, yeah. Tumblr, yeah. Uh, Blogger, all these sites went you know, well, actually, yeah. when we started, none of those were around. It was um, we launched around the same time that TypePad launched. Wow! So they were like the big competitor out there for us. And actually, we did have a free service for the first year, but I didn't have any external funding outside of my dad's money. So when it was given this choice at the end of the first year between having 98 customers who are uploading MP3s and paying for their server space, or just cutting them and focusing on the guys who were willing to commit to the product and believed in it, you know. It, it was just a much clearer choice. I mean, if I had been inundated with money, um, maybe I would have thought differently. I would have gone for the growth or something like that. But I'm very happy with that choice, and we, we stand by it. So it allows us to do 
you know, just a more premium level of service. And how is uh, running a business in New York? Uh, I'm sure a lot of these VCs mm -hmm. uh, asked you to move to the Valley. You obviously declined. I uh, mean, back then? Yeah, I mean, haven't yeah, they? Back then. I mean, well, I mean, they were always on the periphery. I mean, you know, I talked to Sequoia about five years ago. That was my first encounter with like a really big VC. Um, and it just didn't work out at the time. I mean, Squarespace was, again, just myself, um, about a half a million in revenue and stuff like that. And I think it was just, you know, a bit much for them to ask me to move out there and, you know, run it and everything like that. Um, but, you know, I, it was a blessing in disguise because I've always wanted to live in New York. I grew up in Maryland and I moved here about four years ago now. Mm. And um, this has just been my dream come true. You know, I, I love New York. I love the creative energy. So, um, yeah, just really happy to be here. Where, um, it's a, yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to ask, what's a talent pool like in New York? I mean, a lot of people who watch the show are from the Valley. They yeah. consider, hey, if I'm, if I'm going to move from Boise, Idaho, or Vancouver, or, you know, whatever it is, um, wherever they live, D.C., whatever. A lot of times they're, they're trying to pick between New York and, and the Valley, and Valley's the number mm -hmm. one. You pick New York. Uh, tell me what the talent pool is like. Tell me what it's like, you know, in terms of running a business there versus the Valley. Well, I mean, tough question, right, because I've never run one in the Valley. Okay, yeah. But, um, well, what is your perception? Get, yeah. Yeah, my perception is that there's probably more there's probably more engineering talent in the valley, right. but I think there's the same scarcity of really really great great engineers everywhere. So, I mean, we have to you know, we'll import people from anywhere. I mean, a lot of the people in our office are from all over. Uh, we fly people in from San Francisco, um, a few grew up here, but just, you know, they're from everywhere. Uh, and importing talent, uh, is that how you get most of your talent? Or do you find people in New York that you steal from Wall Street or something? You know, we don't find people we steal from Wall Street. I, I, it's a very interesting thing. A lot of people say that. Um, I think that the mindset of somebody who would go and work at a big financial firm as a programmer is very different from the mindset of somebody who would work at, you know, a company like this, which is this fusion of, you know, engineering and design and, and, and just would find something like that exciting. So, you know, I, just, we haven't found a lot of people from Wall Street. Uh, who's the largest Perhaps. publication using the product now? I mean, I know it's for the sort of dude market, the mid-tier, I would say, small business, yeah. whatever. Uh, but, but who's the biggest? Who's the most surprising? I see you have GE as a client. Uh, who's the yeah, most? Yeah, I mean, G the GE, the Mark Echoes. I mean, ABC <coughs> News Radio has a site on it. Um, it's just, it, they come from all over. It's just really, it's really all over the place. It's pretty amazing, actually. So yeah. large diversity. Who, who's the biggest? Who would you say is the biggest site in terms of traffic? I mean, you know, it's one of the... It's always surprising sometimes when you run the numbers and you find out which ones are really getting like just a ton of traffic. Like sometimes we'll see a traffic spike and we'll be like, well, you know, what's going on? Where's this thing coming from? And it'll be like, like one of the ones we found, it just blew me away, was a, um, there's a knitting site called Pearlby. And she's got a uh, yarn store somewhere, you know, on uh, Prince Street here in New York. I think it's Prince Street. And um, she gets like 2 million visitors a month to this, to this knitting site. And it's like, I just never knew stuff like that existed until... Uh, running Squarespace. Uh, so let's talk about the competition with um, WordPress. Would you say that's yeah. the number one competitor right now? I mean, I consider competition Drupal. to be, at, yeah. uh, not, not, um, you know, I consider competition to be anyone who makes publishing easy online. And I think that that's no historically taken the form of blogging products. So, you know, back a long time ago, it was TypePad and movable type. Then that evolved into WordPress. Now we're seeing this shift towards simplicity, and you're seeing things like Tumblr become more competitive. Um, Drupal's always been, Drupal has always seemed to require a programmer, so that really wasn't our sweet spot. Um, although we are seeking to, you know, service the designer market, so you know there is some overlap there. But I would say, I mean, yeah, you see it a lot. You see it a lot with like a WordPress. Yeah, and so when you look at the competition uh, between movable type which seems to have then given way to WordPress, and now mm -hmm. WordPress seems to be giving way uh, to you guys and Tumblr. Mm -hmm. Take me through, you must have followed this uh, very acutely. Um, yeah. What do you think movable type, where did they drop the ball? Because they were supposed to take over the universe. What was their yeah, mistake? I mean, I, I, well, I think if you remember, there was this time after, <clears throat> um, after movable type got, after Six Apart got their VC funding, where movable type went from a free product to something that was like $300 a license or something like that. I mean, it was just like massive shift. Yeah. Um, their type pad product was always like, you know, it was very early <clears throat> to the game. It was always good. People relied on it. Um, 
but the movable type thing, when they pulled that pricing switch and increased the price like that, I mean, I just recall that being kind of a disaster for them in terms of perception. And I think that that really gave rise to WordPress's existence as a, you know, a way to kind of combat that. They needed, people needed something free. Um, I think people will always need something free, but, you know, free, I, what's the, what's the phrase? Free like a puppy? Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it comes with, it comes with a cost, right? Right. So, I mean, there will always be a space for people like Squarespace um, in that market. Uh, and then WordPress, obviously, I think the biggest still, right? Bigger, much bigger than Tumblr. Much I bigger mean, than us, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, uh, they seem to be, uh, they seem to have big market share, maybe mm -hmm. not growing as much, and maybe they've sort of hit, hit a ceiling. What, what's your take on uh, Matt Mullenweg's amazing success and company? Where are they at today in the marketplace? I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're huge. I mean, between them and Tumblr, I mean, those are top 50 internet sites. Um, it, 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 it's interesting because we, we, we decided to focus on a very, very particular group of people, right? The free, the, so the paying customers. Whereas we could have gone free and presumably, I mean, had a much, 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 much bigger market share. But we decided to uh, we decided to focus on our core. I mean, you know, I don't I don't generally like to comment on competitors. I mean, I think I think Tumblr does a great job with their um, with their focus. I think WordPress. I mean, I, I'm I'm a person who's really into the design. I think that. I think the back end and stuff has just become a bit of a mess. I mean, but you see that in all open source things. I mean, yeah. open source and design don't exactly go hand in hand. I mean, open source can do a lot of good, uh, can, open source can do a lot of things well. I mean, we use plenty of open source tools here at Squarespace for our infrastructure and everything else. But, you know, when it, when it comes to crafting an experience, I just, I don't see that coming from open source. Um, for instance, I mean, do you see a lot of open source movies? No. I mean, you, you can't have that many voices and get this coherent thing at the end. So. Uh, Apple's products, I hear, are not based on an open source process. No, uh, no, no, no. So, I mean, that it's is the, it, it seems like open source, like you're saying, is, I never really thought about this, to be honest. It's an interesting thing for us to unpack a little bit. Mm -hmm. Open source equals um, free, well-developed, well-supported, very extensible, but not necessarily very elegant and easy to use. Elegant and easy to use means, in some ways, proprietary, provided by one person who is, has to have a certain level of control in order to have consistency. So you give up this sort of madness and this very openness for a little bit more closed, but for a lot more functionality. Is that what your take on it? Uh, I mean, it depends on your audience. It depends on um, what kind of product it is. I mean, you could look at you know, Apache, Apache Foundation products, which are open source, and I think they're very elegantly designed, but it's for a particular function, right? It's for a server function. Right. Um, it, it's, this, it's this thing where it's got these defined inputs and outputs, and, and you know, you know it's going to work one way because it's been validated to work that way. Um, I mean, for something like a phone or a website or something like that, where you got to get all these little subtleties right, you know, I just, I just never see it happen. I mean, you, you, you know, it's... You can't design. You can't design by committee. You can't design yeah. by consensus. It has to be one guy's take on it. Yeah. So, uh, and you actually see that in terms of like, there's been a lot of people discussing open hardware platforms, and none of them have ever really materialized. You know, like people are like, oh, we should do a, you know, Dave Weiner and Peter Rojas and I talked back when about making an MP3 player that was specifically designed around the concept of podcasting. It doesn't seem like there's ever. I mean, correct me. Do you, I don't know if you know one, Tyler or Andrew or Anthony. Um, what is there any hardware product that is open source? Bug Labs. What's Bug Labs, right. Right, it was Bug Labs. Um, I haven't played with that at all. Yeah, it seems like but nothing. It, it looked neat. It looked like Legos, right? I mean, yeah. uh, are, are Le like our Legos elegantly designed? Yeah, of course. But you, do you want to make, I don't know what you would make with Legos that you would uh, carry around or something, but it's not, it's for, it's for in that regard, well, I want to stop that analogy. But, you know, you can't, it just never seems to come together. Uh, take me through this, uh, what most people would consider a monster, I guess it's your BRC round, um, raise from Excel and Index Ventures. How did that go down? Uh, did you use what, a banker? You, did you do it yourself? No. I mean, what do, what do you mean BRC round? I mean, in terms of size or in terms of which? Uh, it's series B, series C. Was it a series B or C? And it's obviously a large round. I think it's a series A. I mean, we had not raised any other capital up until that point. Oh wow! I didn't know yeah. that. Wow! So you were just funded off of revenues and your and your pops thirty k. 
completely self-funded up to 100 million. Uh, dad giving you 30K, is your dad blown out wealthy and your trust fund kid, or is like that meaningful money no, to your dad? No, no, I mean, actually, I always, t I always talk about the story of um, getting that money from him. It was, uh, it was a three-hour fight for me to get that, you know, that, that 30 grand. I mean, my, my, I mean and, and this is at a point where, you know, I've been a programmer for a very long time, and I've held a lot of, you know, jobs in programming, and I had worked on this product for, you know, eight months, nine months, and all I needed to do, I was just at the point where it was like, the only thing I can do without money is buy the computers. <laughs> and you, need, you need to help me buy the computers. I can't make the computer. I can make everything else. But, you know, it was this, it was this massive, massive, massive fight to get that money. Um, and he ended up getting, you know, 5% of the company for it. So he's, he's really, really happy. I mean, it was a, a very fulfilling thing. I mean, I think that was his best investment ever. So, so your um, dad turned 30K, I'm going to estimate, into 4 or $5 million. <laughs> I mean, that's, you made yeah. your dad a millionaire. That's true. I mean, that's, that's a big deal. I mean, I, I think that's... It was, it's a great thing. It's one of the most, it's one of the, it's one of the greatest feelings from the, uh, the whole experience. I bet you you're as proud as that as you are of Squarespace. Yeah, no, I, I, it's, it's an amazing thing. It's really good. So, I mean, that, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, no. You know, I, we, I always had a computer growing up, but it was nothing, you know, particularly special. So. And so tell me about this Excel Index Ventures round. You're obviously building sure. the company for a couple of years. You get into sure. a couple of mills in revenue. Sure. It's pretty impressive. You got the VC salivating. What do they start yeah. circling? They got, uh, they, yeah. they start calling you? They start emailing? How, how does this wind up going down? Take us through the details. I mean, sure. So, you know, they've always been around, right? But I think over the past two years, Squarespace started to hit a level of growth that was just a complete departure from where it's been. And there's two key drivers to that. One is actually that we had some incredibly successful advertising in the podcasting space, which, you know, just kind of helped us get to a next plateau level of growth. And the other thing is, about two years ago, we launched version five of our product, which is what you're using right now, which was a rewrite of a lot of the interface in JavaScript and things like that. It was a very forward-thinking move. I mean, we cut off IE6 at the time, all that. It was just, it was pretty controversial. Uh, but ultimately, you know, a, a great move. So, I mean, you know, the VCs are always, they've always been interested, but when it really started to take off, then of course they got really interested. And I mean, my line through the whole thing is that, you know, we've been independent for six and a half, seven years. I mean, back then it was six and a half years. I mean, I don't need to take any of this money. Right. So, you know, if, if the terms aren't met, that's fine. I'll just keep growing it. I mean, in fact, it was funny because um, someone from Sequoia called during this time, and we didn't speak extensively with Sequoia in the second round, but, you know, they had talked to me five years ago, and back then, you know, we were making half a million in revenue, and I was like, hey, man, you know, we're 20 X yeah. when we last spoke. And he just goes, <laughs> 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 it was, it was a phenomenal. Feeling. All right, I mean, there you like, go. 28 hey. minutes in and seven seconds. We get our first curse word, by the way, <laughs> there uh, you go. Anthony, now you have to put $20 in the jar for the, uh, okay. for, for the uh, text here to go get drinks at uh, Warzawa. Uh, next do. time you're out in LA, we have a rule. If you curse on the show, it's 20 bucks to the, those guys and their beer fund. Um, I'm, surprised, I'm surprised it took me 28 minutes, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 28, 28 minutes in. Um, yeah. It took that long, exactly. Oh, oh there's $40 there we go. in the thing. Uh, 28 yeah. minutes, 36 seconds. Um, so why uh, Excel and why Index? Uh, take me through why you chose those two guys. I mean, we had a, we had a lot of world-class guys. I mean, it, it, you know, they just I felt a connection with both of the partners there. I felt a connection with Dom and Andrew, who were uh, the guys who joined our board. Um, they just, they were just inspiring people. So you know, Dominic Vidal, Andrew Bracchia from uh, from Excel. Um, Andrew Bracchia is from Excel. Dominic Vidal is from Index. Joined our board along with a guy named Jonathan Klein, who's the uh, CEO of Getty Images. Oh wow! Um, so, so he's yeah, your independent. Have, yeah, he's our independent. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, it's just a it's just a phenomenal group of people, and actually that was one of the big drivers for for doing the round. I think to get the company to the next stage, just we needed more guidance like that. I, I think that it's been it's been a game changing thing for us. I'm really glad we did it. Uh, so when you, so Andrew actually a great guy, uh, formerly at Yahoo, right? Didn't he do? Yes. That? He did some big things at Yahoo. Um, yep. Really smart guy. I think actually Yahoo Answers was a big part of uh, his. Uh, his uh, knowledge base there. Um, very smart on community, all that stuff. So you're saying, if, uh, if I'm hearing correctly, you got a lot of world-class people buzzing around, you don't mm -hmm. need the money, so you get, let's just uh, assume, very good terms, 
But more mm -hmm. importantly, you get the pick of the litter in terms mm -hmm. of people that are compatible, and you're not yeah. doing this to bring in the money, but you're bringing in uh, maybe the knowledge is what you're looking the for. Uh, the knowledge, the talent. I mean, also, you know, the money does help. I mean, it's just, you know, even at a company of our side, it's just ridiculous trying to make big infrastructure purchases and get the credit from Dell and convince you, you're convinced Dell that you're, you're not going to fall apart the next day or something like that. I mean, it's just, it's just something we shouldn't really have to worry about. I mean, at this stage of our growth, we should be building the appropriate amount in the future, or building the appropriate amount into the future and just worrying about other things with our time and not dealing with that kind of stuff. You know, also the money can be used for uh, some, some, some small M&A stuff, uh, yep. you know, AccuHire type things. Cool. Uh, and so you said uh, podcasting. And by the way, if you have a question uh, for Anthony, uh, you can put it in the chat room on Ustream.com or Ustream.tv slash this begin. Just put Q colon, uh, or you can ask on Twitter with the pound twist, T-W-I-S-T, hashtag. Um, any good questions in there, Tyler? A common question uh, in the chat room is, what about the mobile side of Squarespace? Yeah, talk to us about mobile. Is that is that a big thing? Do publishers want to update mobile? I mean, obviously, yeah, sites huge. need to be mobile integrate, mobile ready. Yeah, no, it's huge. So, I mean, the, we're approaching it from a number of ways. So, one is over the over the summertime, we got our iPad or sorry, our iPhone application out, which was something we spent a lot of time on. You know, we wanted to take what we designed online and that experience and put that into the mobile experience. So we weren't the first guy, we weren't the first guys out there with an iPhone app, but it, we, we came out with something we were really proud of. We did the same thing this December with the iPad app. We weren't the first, but you know, we, we took the time, we took the care, and we made something that we were really proud of. So I love the experiences on both those things. Actually, one of the things we're working on right now is, um, so the next version of Squarespace is gonna be a huge departure from uh, a, a lot of what we've had in the past. And mobile is one of the things we're really focusing on in that space. So sites will have native mobile versions. They'll, they'll work really well on any, all devices. It's just, it's a really cool thing. Uh, you mentioned before podcasting. I know since I uh, used to do this week in tech all the time that you're yeah. a big uh, sponsor. Uh, yeah. how, how much of a catalyst was that for your business, Leo Laporte and the just constant discussion that about was, the product? Yeah, I mean, that was absolutely huge. I mean, when we, when we took that first dive, like, you know, it helps that we spent so much time working on the product and making something good before we went and did that. Yeah. So that when we went to those advertisers, they felt, you know, obviously they disclosed it was a paid advertisement, which you should always do. But, you know, they, they really did use the product and they genuinely liked it. It sounds like when you talk about MailChimp, you know, it's just, it, it must be a pleasure to have them as a sponsor because yeah. you use it, you like it. It's a it's it's a win win, you know. You yeah. endorse it. The endorsement's better. They pay for it. Everyone's happy. I mean, it's a great it's a great thing. Uh, and Dignation, you're big sponsors of that for a while. Kevin yep. obviously uses the, the product. Yeah, um, yep. Kevin. That brought a big a big audience as well, huh? Yeah, yeah, huge. I mean, all these guys, you know, when they buy in and use it and endorse it, 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 it becomes a really important thing. But you have to get the product at a level where people are comfortable doing that. I right. mean, I think I, I see a lot of small companies just you know, chasing after celebrities or chasing after endorsements when they're just really not ready for it. Yeah, you have to ha the product has to be tight and you have a new level of advertising today, I think, where the people who are running shows like This Week in Tech, Dignation, yeah. This Week in Startups, we actually pick our sponsors. Like, we won't just put yeah. anybody on the air. I mean, I know, Le I learned this from Leo, which is Leo yeah. will only put something on the air if he uses it, whether that was Audible, yep. Squarespace, I mean, you go down the list yep. of things, for us, it's DNA Mail, MailChimp, et cetera. Um, and boy, does that make it just so much easier because you can genuinely say, hey, we use this product. Again, it's a win-win. The advertiser wins, you win, everyone's happy. It's a great thing. Yeah. Uh, any other uh, advertising, uh, marketing things that you've done that have been, been big wins or secrets of the business? I mean, you know, the podcasting one was something for me that was really surprising. I did not expect that to work in the way it did. But it was, it was one of the only mediums out there where you could take, you, you could put an ad out there and you could have somebody who people genuinely respect talk authentically about your ad. I mean, we've had, we've had, it was really that. You know, I mean, there were situations where we did podcast ads and it didn't work. And those situations were where, you know, somebody pulls out a script and they're like, and our sponsor this week is Squarespace. It's a really great way to make a website, blah, blah, oh, what, 30 seconds are up? Okay, great, moving on. Um, I mean, there's no life to that. They don't, you don't believe that. No one cares about that. Um, you know, we really wouldn't be here without AdWords. I mean, that, yeah. that was such a low-cost way of doing things. It was so great. I mean, I, I, we started with, you know, literally $500 a month spent on AdWords, 
and it's just wrapped it into 50 grand a month. You know, I mean, it's just, it's amazing how that thing scales. When you start spending that kind of money, does that mean you have to have a full-time SEM in-house or a couple of them? Good question. Um, you know, for the first couple of years, so another weird fact about Squarespace is uh, I ran it myself for three years. So I was- <laughs> Startup <laughs> yeah, of one. A startup of one for a while. That would be quite impossible these days, but th th those were interesting times. Um, uh, you know, in the early years, I would just run some quick analytics and just tweak some bids and just make it look approximately correct. And I was like, you know, I probably, sorry, it's an ambulance outside. No, no, it's, you know what this reminds me of? I know you're down in Tribeca somewhere because I can see those windows or you're down know, in, we're, we're in, where Soho. are you? You're in Soho. I can tell from uh, the loft-like appearance here. It reminds me of when I used to do, uh, Josh Harris had pseudo on Broadway and Houston. We would is, basically have this, a fire engine go by once in a while. And yeah. And you just can't hear anything. No. This is uh, this is Broadway, and this is Grand. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. you're right there. I mean, you're right there in the heart of it. And those windows yeah. are about 150 years old, so they're about this thin. Uh, yeah, they just they give you no protection. <laughs> and the great part but, is, like, if they're coming down Broadway, like sometimes they might be taking like literally two minutes a block, as like yeah. no cab <laughs> in New York. Right. It's amazing when you move to Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, you hear a siren, everybody pulls over, stops, and then looks for where it is. In New York. Everybody looks for the ambulance and then tries to get behind it. So basically, it just creates an entire war where people are like, oh my God, I've got to get behind it. So everybody's blocking it and nobody gets yeah. out of the way because they want to just have enough room for it to get back so they can just jump in behind it. Yeah, um, total disaster. It's, anyway, a, it's, a, it's, I, I, a, it's absolutely always, a TD. <laughs> we've always had offices in Soho. I, I love Soho. I live in Soho. Um, we've uh, had offices around the corner. It's just, it's, it's a phenomenal place. Uh, yeah, I mean, and in terms of recruiting, if people get to work in Soho, go out afterwards, just awesome. Any questions from the chat room, Tyler? Um, what's coming up over and over again? <laughs> uh, yeah, what's coming up? We yeah. get that a lot. I mean, you know, in, in 2011, one of the things I want to do is improve our communications and reveal more about our roadmap. Um, V6 for us, Squarespace V6, we're on V5 right now. V6, we've been working on for a while. And it's gonna be a big change. I mean, we haven't had a change this big. I mean, V4 to V5 was a big change. And by the way, when we made that change, our um, subscription doubled overnight. We were signing up about 20 people a day. We immediately started signing up 40 people and it never went down. That's paid subscriptions. Um, huge, I think this one's gonna be bigger. I mean, it, it, it really just fixes all of the fundamental problems that we've had with the platform that have prevented us from having the agility that I wanted in launching new themes and developing experiences that are for particular kinds of content sites. So for instance, um, in the future on V6, when you want a photography site on Squarespace, you know, it's gonna be very, very, very tailored to that. It's not gonna be this kind of cookie cutter, two it looks like a blog sort of thing. It's gonna be you know, a beautiful image scroller, great ways to manage media, just, just really getting it right. And we're making one platform that's gonna let us do you know, photography sites, small business sites, um, blogs, all these things just incredibly well. Um, and, uh, and just provide best of breed experiences and all those things. Here's, all those, uh, uh, here's my site, the launch yep. site, if you pull up my computer, guys. Uh, this is the new site that that's coming okay. out next week. My guys pushed the envelope. They said they almost broke, uh, <laughs> almost broke the software trying to get this thing to work because they were doing so I much hope. crazy graphic stuff. But really yep. beautiful up here on the top right, website management. Uh, yep. Member accounts, member permissions, IP access fil filters, file a lot storage. Of stuff I mean, blog importer, traffic overview, I mean, refers. I mean, it's basically like instead of having to have 20 different pieces, it's just all in one place. So right. maybe your analytics, I'm assuming your analytics are not as robust as, say, uh, Google Analytics, mm -hmm. but no, good not. enough. Yeah, well, they have a, they have a separate point, right? Yeah. So, um, y you know, Google Analytics will give you funnel analysis and all these drill-ins. I mean, Squarespace Analytics is like brief overview. What am I looking at? How's my traffic right now? You know, just it's just at that level. Yeah, uh, and uh, basically you control it over here on the right, where you have like the stock. You have the, you can edit it here. This is where yeah. you put the modules in on the top right, and then you yeah. have the design, and then you can look at it. Yeah. And what's really cool is the way you log in when you're on your site. You just hit escape, and it asks you for your login. Ah, you know the trick. Yeah, I know. Lots yeah, of yeah. like that trick. You know that trick. It's not really. It's not like published anywhere, but yeah. that's one of my favorite things. Yeah. Well, yeah. we. Ha you know, I got a guy here who came to work for me. 
and he was mm -hmm. he did his space on Squarespace. So for like a yeah. year, he's like, you have to check out Squarespace. And I was like, yeah, that kid, you you emailed me like three years ago. Like, hey, I'm doing this site. Did I? <laughs> yeah, like three years ago. What hey, did you I'm do a big for me. What did, what did I do? I'll, I'll, I pull, I'll pull it up and embarrass you later. But it was just like, hey, I'm a big fan. I wish you would move from WordPress. And I was like, oh, come on, kid, get out of here. You're bothering me. Like, WordPress <laughs> is the best. And then, like, a couple years later, I'm like, wow, this is really cool. One of my guys yeah, yeah. goes, you have to see this. You have to see this. And I guess you have these devotees. Um, how, do yeah. you, how do you build those? What's the secret to building those, um, what do you call them? They're these evangelists that you have in the market? How, do you, do you yeah, I mean, have a program to do that? I mean, we're developing more. I mean, the, the ones you're seeing are really uh, organic. I mean, it, I think I think what you need to do to build people like that, and it's 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 through no, you know, I mean, it's not something we. You just need to surprise people, right? Huh. I mean, you need to you need to w w when somebody goes and signs because you, you asked this a while ago. You said, "Why did you pick to do something that people have already done before?" I mean, we didn't we didn't invent publishing sites online. I mean, that's no. not something Squarespace came up with. I mean, absolutely not. I mean, but how, how are we able to succeed in a market that's one, so fragmented, and two, it already been done before and everything yeah. else? And I think it's because we surprise people. I really? think that people look at it and you go, wow, I, I didn't really expect somebody to put in all the effort to make the buttons look like that and to make everything line up like that or to make this work like that or go, they thought of this. Oh, they did stats. Oh, it's all integrated. Wow. And it's just like, oh, actually, they cared about this. And it's so interesting to see, you know, a company. I guess that, that just we really care. You know, we really care what it looks like. We care how it feels. Sur and um, you know, that's evidence by the fact. Yeah. Surprise and delight your users. Yeah. And I mean, that is your strategy, is it not? Yeah. I mean, it's it's to create an element of surprise. But we do that. Like our element of surprise is created through quality, right? Ah. Where we we spend all this time on something that other people would just glance over. I mean, if you look at, I mean, in Squarespace version six, when it when it comes out, you look at all the effort that goes into, you know, the composed journal entry page. You know, we could have gotten that done in a day, two days, if we just wanted to do the generic <laughs> and have no experience behind Boop, it. Forty-one but, you know, minutes, forty-five uh -huh. seconds yeah. in. There's another twenty. I got you for forty. Yeah, yeah. That's another beep. <laughs> all right, so anyway, you basically something that takes a day to put a blog, you know, new blog post in. How long did you spend on that? I mean, well, we 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 spent our. T I, I, what we ended up doing is instead of looking at the journal entry composed screen and spending a lot of time on that, we looked at all of the dialogues in the system and said, you know, how do we come up with a visual system for creating dialogues? Mm -hmm. And so all the dialogues in the system are unified. They're all black. They like have these great look and feel. Um, so you know, we spent maybe a month on just that. Um, you know, just just to make just to make those interface screens. How long do you how long do you have between a 5.0 and a 6.0? Is that a six month process, a year process? Well, we've been on we've been on five for two years now. Wow. Um, but we hadn't started six until, I mean, we had had the ideas coming together about seven or eight months ago, but then just totally derailed with the funding stuff. I mean, right. all this stuff is so frustrating. I mean, you know, we've been growing like crazy. There's derailments there. We've gone from, you know. 20, 20 some people this time last year to 47. I mean, mm. all these things just, just set you back. So, I mean, we're in this great phase right now of really getting things done and really focusing on that next generation product. And I've seen more progress on V6 in the past 50 days than I've seen in the past eight months. Uh, Anthony, we look forward to seeing version six and awesome. receiving your PayPal for 40 bucks for the curse words. <laughs> Continued <laughs> success on Squarespace. I've, uh, Thank you. I have launch running off of it, and it's I have delightful. A good Squarespace story. You have a Squarespace story? Yes. Oh, really? That's so right. Mark Suster was beta testing. VC Mark Suster, host of This Week in Venture Capital. Mr. Big Fancy Pants Mark Suster was. Fancy Pants. <laughs> That's his new nickname, Fancy yeah. Pants. Yeah. He does Mark. have these cool cuff links. Yeah. He's like alligator cuff links. <laughs> yeah, fancy cuffs. Um, he was beta. He's a beta tester on my thing, and he tweets beta out. Beta tester on your thing, which yes. is launching at launch. I, I, but anyway. Anyway, he's he sends out a tweet. Mm. You know, oh, loving this thing. This is incredible. Blah blah blah. Right. No, and this is all. No one knows what the heck he's, he's talking, talking about. about. Right. But I have the Twitter account up, so they're going to the Twitter account. Hmm. So it's like, oh shoot, I got to collect all the. I want to collect all the emails from everybody who's right. coming to this thing. So I was like, shoot. And he had just tweeted shoot, this. Shoot. You said. I said, oh shoot. Right. <laughs> shoot. You almost heard the G cash. Willikers. Almost heard the cash Ching. register go off. So G Willikers. And Mike here said, uh, "I was like, man, I got to get a site built like now. Stat. Like now. Yeah. Like not. E I don't even have time to do a WordPress install. Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, here, let's do it right now. And all I had was a logo. We threw up. You can put in an email catch form and tie it to an Excel. We had the site up 
and tied the domain in uh, way under five minutes. Like, it was about three minutes. Wow. And then I was like, what is this thing called again? He's all Squarespace. And then yeah. from then on, I was just on There you have it. Tyler awesome. endorsed uh, Squarespace. Jason endorses Squarespace. Uh, continued yeah. success, Anthony. And when, when are we going to see version six? Is that next week? <laughs> You want to launch it at launch? You, you, you sound like our investors. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what about February 23rd and 24th? You want to do it at launch? Yeah. Uh, wait, when, when is it? Fe my, my launch conference, February 23rd. February 20th. Yeah, no, no possible way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, it, it'll be ready when it's ready. Um, I like that answer. It, it's going to be, I don't want to say anything. So what, um, the, board, it, the board's it, always like, hey, give us a date, give us a date, and you're just like, eh, I'll, I'll give you a date. You know, I, I have rough dates. I just can't, I, I just can't. You know, if I need to push it to get something else in there that needs to get in there, I just want to reserve that right. I mean, it, one thing I can promise is that it's going to be really surprising. It's going to be amazing. Awesome. I mean, it's it's a complete rethink of a lot of the interfaces, and um, hopefully, you know, it's just going to uh, just take take these sites to that next level. Awesome. So. Uh, and it is the constant pressure. I was on a board call just the other day for GDGT, and <laughs> they have this incredible new version. And we've this is like board meeting number four, where we're seeing the mock-ups of it. And now uh, I'm the jerk board member. I went from being the entrepreneur telling like Roloff and Sequoia and everybody like, eh, it'll be ready when it's ready. <laughs> and then I'm on the board, I'm like, when are we getting a date? I would like a date. It's my fiduciary <laughs> responsibility to get a date. <laughs> I'm like, oh God, I All turned right. into that guy. Who cares about a date? There's, there's a ton of money in the bank. That's why we have a ton of money in the bank. Don't worry. All right, Anthony. <laughs> Continued success. Congratulations. Go enjoy a nice Friday night out, Friday night out yeah. uh, with your team. Uh, Go buy them some drinks with all that uh, Index Ventures money. I'll tell Danny yeah. Reimer you go spend it. You yeah. go pretty quick when you spend that index money in, uh, in yeah, Soho. Yeah, in Soho. I mean, it's, it's fourteen dollar well, martinis so on Danny Reimer. Martinis. We've only got about I don't know. It's only, it's only got three million martinis left. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll be coming in for one. All right, man. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Bye. Oh my God, what a great entrepreneur, huh? It's great to have, I love yeah. success stories. Guys yeah. who like just hustle, take dad's 30 Gs, make dad into a millionaire. That's just awesome. Yeah. That story alone, I'd say this. This is a great interview. You know why? Not just because I'm a great interview, but because there were just two great moments in there. Who were the two great moments? The dad. The dad story is just incredible. That'd be a great clip. Made dad a millionaire. Yeah, and what was the other good one? Not the siren. What would no. be? No. Um... It was something when he said, like, why they're successful. I asked him how he was successful. Uh, what made him successful? He, he said he, AdWords. Well, that was the technique. But he, he said we, we wouldn't be here I without said, AdWords. I said, what, what do you think is, you know, secret to the success? And he said, surprise. Surprising the users. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, there's, and he said quality after that. Surprise is not something when you ask somebody why they're successful that most people would say. That's the first person I ever heard say, oh, we like to surprise people. But I think it's true. Um, and something else that's true is that you will love MailChimp. Wait, there already, I already did a commercial for them. Um, we're going to give away one of these twist bags. This week in Startups bags. I'll put up an image of them, but I'll show you mine right here. And they're going to put a uh, launch ticket in there right now if you say thank you to uh, at MailChimp for sponsoring This Week in Startups. Uh, and we'll give away th two or th three of those bags this week and three tickets to launch. Producer Rob, you take care of that uh, between now and the next episode. Uh, thank you. Thank you to MailChimp. And they, I mean, these guys love it when they see you sign up. There's so many people signing up for these services. It's awesome. I love it. And I think we're going to do an Ask Jason. Okay, this has been a good episode so far. Mo Koifman did a great job. People yeah, talking about that episode. Good episode yeah. People talking about the Danny Sullivan episode. Mm -hmm. They're going to talk about the Anthony Casalina episode. Anthony Bag of Donuts. Anthony Anthony Canoli Casalina. That's his nickname. Anthony Anthony Canoli Casalina. I like that. Uh, on the phone we have Sean from the 714. Where are you calling from, Sean? Hey, Jason, okay. calling from uh, Ladera Ranch, California, down uh, about 60 miles south of you. Ladera? Ladera. Ladera, where is that? Uh, he's, south he's in the County. OC. He's in the OC. You a Republican? Uh, yeah, guilty as charged. Are you part of that? What's that <laughs> church down there? What's that church down there with the, who's the guy? Yeah. Oh, Rick Warren. the, the big part, guy, yeah. Are you part yeah. of Rick Warren's church? No, no, no. You don't, you don't, you don't live a purposeful life? <laughs> you don't hate the gays? It's been a long time. Gays? Long time since I lived the purposeful life. You don't hate the gays? <laughs> no. I just no. love this guy. He's like, Rick Warren is like, he's anti-gay people. And he's got this huge church down in the OC. And I'm like, you live in California and you're against gay people? It's OC. They, 
It's bizarre. <laughs> no, it's like it, the, the, you look at California, and it's like blue, and there's just a big red zit. Yeah. You know, like a scar, right there, <laughs> like where all the where all the Republicans <laughs> are. Do I mean, do all the Republicans down there hate the gays? No, no, I don't think so. You know, <laughs> pretty much uh, everything south of you is Republican, though. It is. Well, no, wait. Is, is Diego Republican? Same, no, San no. Diego's not Republican. Laguna. I mean, it's, it's conservative, but not right. blue. So. Yeah, no, Laguna is. Yes. Uh, that's like hippies. Yes. I like that area. I like Laguna. That's where I'm going to retire. Okay, uh, Sean, you didn't call in to talk politics, and I am not here to talk politics, uh, although Tyler's always baiting me into talking politics. Uh, what is your question, Sean? Well, first, I just wanted to congrats on the Mahalo 4.0 launch. I think it looks awesome. What a guy, uh, what a guy. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. I, give, I give this pitch a 10. This I give this a 10? <laughs> this is an Ask Jason. It's not a Shark Tank. It's an Ask Jason. So, uh, a little okay, bit question. background on myself. Right out of high school, I launched an uh, e-commerce site. It was about oh, almost 10 years ago now. And uh, did pretty well on that. What's and, the name of the site? Oh, that was... Oh, okay. not Different it's, site. Uh, 10 years ago. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> that long since been uh, folded in mm -hmm. um that i parlayed into a full-time job at a pretty established e-commerce company and got in charge of launching their new division which was petstore.com and did petstore.com for a couple years made that a pretty premier uh, online pet supply site and then did my own thing again and did uh, autopartsdealer.com in the mm. aftermarket auto parts space. Oh. And um, within about eight months, actually, I was able to get that to one of the top 10 biggest aftermarket auto parts sites in the world. So now I'm kind of trying to pick the next industry to get into mm. and, you know, the next widget to sell. And I was just wondering what advice you would have for somebody like me. Uh, wow. Uh, so you've been successful with the pet store. Auto parts dealer, great domain name, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, very good looking, professional looking site. Uh, obviously, ton of money in this. I mean, mm -hmm. auto parts stores are just billions, tens like of billions that. of dollars. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. $100 billion dollar plus industry. What is it? What's the number? $100 billion dollar plus industry. That's a global number or is that US? It's global. That's global. Yeah, yeah. What is it in the US? Do you know? Oh, I don't know. I mean, there's multiple, multiple sites that do 300 million plus. Wow. Uh, I mean, this is all these knuckleheads with their Mustangs trying to, you know, uh, yeah. make them as fast as my Corvette or something. But actually, there's that, uh, oh, wow, you got that, um, what was that car? What is this one called? Um, GTR? The GTR. That's, a, yeah. that's the Godzilla, right, they call that? The Godzilla got a buddy with that car. It's a sweet ride. It's crazy, right? I mean, it's like 110 grand, but it goes zero to 60 in 3.2 oh, seconds. It's like 82 grand. So you save 60 grand over a 911 turbo, and you got you can beat it around Nuremberg. It's pretty nuts. Oh, at Nuremberg, really? I was just in Germany. I saw the Nuremberg. What is it? Yeah, I saw that video of it in Nuremberg. I mean, this car is. Did it have the record right now, or did it have the record for a little while? No, you know what? Last I heard, the record right now belongs to the Dodge Viper. AC. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. which beat uh, the Corvette. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. The Corvette zero. video is ridiculous. The guys that are on the straightaway in the Nuremberg, type in Nuremberg track Corvette, yeah, in the video. guy 175 miles an hour on the straightaway. Oh, yeah. It was crazy. I mean, then he's got to sl slow this thing down to 60 to a hairpin turn. It's madness. Um, well, you know, there's a lot of these. Um, Sequoia is an investor in, like, this company that owns, like, hammocks.com, and they just buy every generic name and then do commerce. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of money. You start diapers, yeah. did a vertical. Ecomom, doing a vertical. Zappos started with a vertical. So I'm not an e-commerce expert, but clearly markets that are fragmented um, and that people have passion for. So fragmented, I mean uh, a lot of different vendors selling a lot of different items, uh, you know, as opposed to places like, you know, if you want to sell Apple computers, I mean, you're kind of, you know, yeah. out of luck. Um, but I think all commerce is coming together with content. That's the trend I see. And so whereas these sites could do very well in the past, I think that these sites are going to start competing with essentially auto blog with selling ads. So either your site is going to learn how to do content or a content person is going to learn how to do e-commerce. Uh, and I think if you look at Amazon and what they've done successfully, how many times do you go to Amazon for the content instead of the commerce? I mean, no. I'm on Amazon all the time to get information about a book or information Reviews. about a movie. Uh, the reviews, the, just the details, and uh, the same thing uh, with Netflix. I mean, if I want to just get general reviews and, and information on movies, Netflix is a better place to go than most. Um, so what I would say to you is, maybe it's not going to another vertical, 
But I bet that you could make Auto Parts Dealer, you could make Auto Blog to go with this and have a media business. I'm not sure how many millions of dollars Auto Parts Dealer does, but what if you had a, a couple of million dollar um, business in content with, um, you know, make videos. And so what I would do, just like I'm doing here at Mahalo doing a ton of videos, just like I'm doing it this weekend with a ton of videos, video is the future. You take Auto Parts Dealer, you make a, a brand that's, you know, APD, you get APD.com, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever, APD blog, APD video, whatever, and just pay one of these gearheads to go find people and videotape. Get a digital SLR, hire three kids for five, six hundred bucks a week who are into cars and who are into digital video, and have them go tape and make videos, and tell them they can make anything they want, and then you feature them here. You could build probably one of the biggest video sites for the aftermarket. Because I was looking, I want to buy the Jeep Wrangler, uh, unlimited, the new one, the 2011 is really nice, but I want to get one blown out, like because the engines are anemic, and I was just looking for videos of the, of, modded Jeeps. Couldn't find anything, like nothing <laughs> online. Everything I went to YouTube, every video was like some sort of wrapped up spam for a dealership that was selling a Jeep Wrangler, but I couldn't find any good mods. So that's what I would say to you is maybe think about building a video business on top of this. You've already got hundreds of thousands of emails, I take it. Yeah, you know we we haven't been around a whole lot. Right. Uh, you know, launched about a year ago, so uh, you know it's it's definitely quickly growing. But uh, take the money, pump it into video. All right, good that's tip. what I would do because you the SEO on video. This is why I shifted Mahalo. I don't know if you saw today. Matt Cutts basically changed the or announced that Google changed the algorithm. A year ago, I took every Mahalo page that was anemic and de-indexed it from Google, and I took any one that we ranked decently for, and I put videos on it. Because I was panicked that Google's going to like anything low quality is going down, anything high, which means conversely, anything high quality is going up. You are going to be in a dogfight for whatever this, you know, shock or spring is here. But if I go to this suspension and you've got a video at the top of this page here about this, and you have some guy showing it on his Jeep Wrangler or whatever the heck it's on, uh, whatever the frack it's on, and he's talking about how much he loves the Jeep Wrangler. That's going to get a thousand views, whatever. And when a Google search person comes to that page, it's going to say, "Oh wow, there's a good page about it." It's not even a commerce page. This is like a content page. Video, right. video, video. I can't say it enough. Video consumption is about to quadruple on the internet. Go video early. Cool. Thanks, Jason. Awesome, Pleasure. man. I'll talk to you, Sean. Okay. Cheers. All right. Let's bring in Kathy Troy and do the news. Wrap this up. Okay, Kathy, you're here with the news. Hello, how are you? Good, let's hear the first news story. Well, the biggest news story of the year, obviously, was what happened on Monday. Egypt went down. Well. Off the internet. Almost as big as that was the Mahalo. launch of Mahalo 4. Wow, yes. <laughs> if we didn't bring Egypt down. That wasn't. Yeah, it was all the people. You know what happened was we had this incredible. This traffic? No, we were doing how to make eclairs. And oh. Everybody wanted the eclairs. They, they don't make many eclairs. It was the, it was the pifiteroles recipes that just took them down. Uh, no, obviously a great trip. Uh, went very successful. People loved the thing. I'm sure you guys watched it here. We did, and it was really exciting, actually. Yeah, yeah um, it was fun. It's great for the company. So did you practice for it? Uh, I did in the room next door here at Mahalo. I did, what, three practice sessions? So I did a, t I mean, I did one talk, got feedback from Tyler and Jason Rapp, did another talk, got feedback. At least two. Two, and then I just thought about it and I did one practice in my hotel and it was fine. But I like the jokes because even yeah. though they kind of you like kind of laughed it off and, and you were just like, well, I thought that one would work, and you actually had a couple of laughs from that. Anyway. Yeah. Well my original joke was just they banned, but my original <laughs> joke was, um, I guess I can tell it here. So I said, oh, thank you for putting me between James Murdoch and Eric Schmidt. My God, I, I, what did I do to, just, what did I, do? hold on, try one more time. <coughs> <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Dr. Berta, for having me here today and putting me in such a choice speaking slot between James Murdoch and Eric Schmidt. One guy lost his job last week and the other guy got his job from his dad. Oh. These, are my, these are my people. Oh my Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. So <laughs> I, I told the joke to like five people. They all loved it. <laughs> I'm like, do that joke. So then I saw the bird of people. I'm in the staff room, and it's, you know, they're German. Yes. And I told the joke, and one of them goes, but he wasn't fired. <laughs> and I said, no, he wasn't. This other person leans forward and goes, but it's OK to work for your father. That is a virtuous thing to do. Why wouldn't you work for your father? I'm, I don't know what accent I'm doing right now. I can't right. do a German accent. But she goes, she goes, 
Well, it's a good thing to work for your father. That is a very loyal thing to do. Right. And I was like, wow, Germans. Right. Have a sense of humor. Well, no, no. you're innocent. People are like, oh my God, that's so Ricky Gervais. Go. Right, right. I mean, I love Ricky Gervais, as far right. as I'm concerned, the, should do every award well, yeah. show because all of those people are such pompous, you know, whatever. They're, and they're, they think they're like all comedians and they're so liberal. Yeah. And you tell one joke about yeah. them and they're just like, well, that's inappropriate. Like all of a sudden they turn into <laughs> these stodgy people. Meanwhile, they're in these movies yeah. doing whatever. You know, make one joke about their personal life and like, oh my God, next door. Yeah. Um, so, what is my next story? Oh, well actually I want to ask you, because of the conference, it was at the DLD conference, mm -hmm. but I want to ask you specifically about another conference which is South by Southwest. Yes, March, um, right? It is in March and there's a core question actually, which mm -hmm. goes, Twitter did in 2006, it blew up in 2007, mm -hmm. Foursquare right. launched in mm -hmm. 2009 mm -hmm. at South by Southwest, mm -hmm. blew up in 2010, so do you have any advice for launching? South by Southwest and 2011. My advice is just because these other people did really well there does not mean you'll automatically do great there. Mm -hmm. So now there's a hundred people trying to do this, which means like many marketing techniques, when everybody realizes there's a technique and they rush into it, that means that technique has been overused and it's not going to work. So I don't think going to South by Southwest and trying to replicate Foursquare and Twitter is a, is, a, is, a, is a winning marketing strategy at all. When did South by Southwest become this huge tech gathering? Well, I went to one of the first in 99. Uh, South by South, conference. Well, there was, and then they okay. added interactive. So I went like in 99, and they had like three programs, you know, like three tracks, mm -hmm. and there were maybe 50 of us there, 100, well, maybe 150 people um, on the three tracks. And basically anybody who was there was by default speaking. So basically, uh. they couldn't get anybody to come, so basically they'd give you a speaking gig and they have a panel with eight people, they have panels with eight people on it. <laughs> so this is the only time certain people get to speak because mm -hmm. the panels are made by the audience. Now there's 20 conferences going back to back, 20 tracks. Um, but it's, I think it's five, 450 or $500 to start and maybe the top level goal pass is in, you know, 850 or something. Mm -hmm. And so it's the people's conference, it's a boondoggle, everybody gets drunk, you'll love it. I mean, it's just like going to CES, it's a big party. Uh, but I don't recommend going there if you're trying to conduct business because the only thing that happens there is everybody gets drunk. I mean, it's just everybody on Main Street drinking it up, going to parties, nothing's accomplished. Uh, but it's awesome, and I will be there this year. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually spent, but it is awesome. Well, maybe there's some business to get done. <laughs> right. Well, I was there last year on Tony's bus. Tony Shea had oh, yes. his happiness bus, uh -huh. and I don't remember. I got on the bus, and then it was like. It was Tuesday, and I was had to get home. I don't remember. Who knows I, what happens inside I lost a day on that bus. <laughs> but uh, I will be interviewing none other than Tim O'Reilly at the event. I've always wanted oh, to interview Tim O'Reilly, so I talked to my friend Hugh Forrest, who's been running it since the beginning, and I said, hey, nobody's ever interviewed Tim O'Reilly. I'd love to interview him. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll get you one of the biggest rooms. Boom. So I'm going to be interviewing Tim O'Reilly about Tim O'Reilly's career. Mm, very cool. So it will be like a, this, it will be a this weekend episode, I guess. We'll, we'll put the video on here. Uh, but, yeah, great event. Go to it. It's cool. That should be really interesting. Yeah. Well, Hashable might be the big winner this year. Hashable. Okay. I'll check it out. Good company. Um, now, my next story really is about Google. Mm. Another story about Google. Another yes. product they come out with, Google Offers. Oh, yeah. I did hear about that. Yeah. Groupon, yeah. So, yeah, they're actually a little bit different. Their business model is different. They don't do discounted, discounted um, offers. It's mm. really just... Or group offers. It's really just discounts, so a dollar off or ten percent off of it's whatever coupons. local offer. Exa it's exactly coupons. It's just coupons. It, it is. But right now, today, there are forty-two thousand different results already. Hmm. Um, wow. Companies are signing up in droves. So, uh, is this is is this like Google basically taking over like local coupon space? This I don't totally think so. I don't think so. I think what it is is Google has, you know, a lot of the local traffic. They have to monetize it. Nobody's monetized it they will take a piece of it. So if you are a business here, Groupon's gonna be able to run you once a year. You know, like in Santa Monica, there's 365 days, in the west side of Los Angeles, it's like one person's gonna go, you know, 365 people are gonna have their thing. The other 3,000 people are not gonna get on Groupon. Maybe it's not good enough for Groupon, they're not in the top 10%, what are they gonna do? Uh, well, they're gonna offer $5 off or buy one, get one free, and people are gonna take out their phones and do a search, it's there, they'll show it to the person on the counter, boom. So I don't think it's going to have any impact on Groupon. I think Groupon is an incredibly defensive business, defensible business, even though everybody says it's not. I think it's very defensible because of brand, mm -hmm. this massive email database they're building, 50 million data, email database. And it's going to be the gold standard. I think people, the local, they have two customers, local businesses and the consumers. Sure. The consumers have voted that they love this brand, and they're our Groupon junkies, and they're loyal to Groupon. And they get the email every day. That's very defensible. It will cost 
you know, half a billion dollars to replicate their, probably $10 for every email they have in their database, they've probably spent. Um, then on the other side of the business, you have the, the vendors who they have created such demand for that there is a line out the door where people will wait six months, nine months, a year to get their group on. on. Groupon. The Groupon on. Uh, and so I, I think Groupon's going to do awesome, have a $15 billion IPO, and they're going to be a global business. And it will, Groupon will mean something to everybody around the planet, like Coca-Cola or Google does. It's a once-in-a-lifetime business. I saw Andrew when I was at DLD, mm -hmm. tremendous entrepreneur. We were at dinner together, and um, yeah, totally defensible. But there's more sites like this starting up every day. Yeah. So Plum District is mom-focused daily deal site. Yep. Um, they're get and this is the first family one. Family finds exactly the first Matt one. Matt Coffins. Okay. Yeah. So I haven't heard of that one, but yeah. this, they just raised eight point five million. Uh, here's what's going to happen. Everybody's going to go after different verticals because now everybody knows that this can make different money. Different demos. Right. And the same thing happened with Amazon. The same thing happened with YouTube success. You know, same thing happened with search engines. Everybody rushes in. Mm -hmm. There'll be a lot of uh, people who make small boutique businesses. It's not that difficult to make a business work in the space, and then they'll just become takeout targets. Uh, and but very few are going to reach that level. But you know, everybody wants to get a piece of that pie, um, and they can draft off of Groupon success. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you come into businesses and say, "Hey, you did a Groupon this year, and where are the Groupon for just for beauty mm -hmm. and massage and life, whatever lifestyle, whatever?" Um, they're going to be like, "Oh, okay." And you say, "Oh, I have 18,000 emails in Los Angeles of people who are really into health. So if you're a hairdresser or a massage place or whatever, you know, yoga, you should do this. Great." But that's not going to detract from Groupon's business. Groupon will still get people lined up there. That's true. I've signed up for at least three or four different daily de deal sites. I'm on all these things. Them. Yeah, exactly. So I, mean, I think they're, everybody's doing that. I mean, the interesting thing will be, does anybody buy, thing at re buy anything at retail anymore? Because it's like everything's on discount. Uh, somebody said they're, gonna, they're doing something on Groupon where some guy is living, exi his existence is on Groupon only. So every meal, everything is Is that just, like a PR campaign? I think, no, I think some guy pitched them on it. He's like making a documentary or something, like a Super Size Me. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, last story, last story, last story. Last story. Um, just something that I thought was interesting. Samsung reported record quarter with positively positive quarterly financial results this mm -hmm. morning. They also disclosed that they shipped 2 million Galaxy tabs in the first three months wow. of its availability. Surprising. So just as a reference point, iPad shipped 3 million in 80 days. Hmm. So, I mean, a million less in 10 more days. It's completely uh, respectable. Yeah. Um, the question is, uh, how do you define the shipping number? Is that ordered by retailers or is that... Uh, actually purchased, and mm -hmm. I think sometimes with those numbers, it's, it's not always clear. Um, yeah, I mean, people are going to buy other tablets, and clearly the $500 price point of the iPad is prohibitive when people can buy a laptop for $500 with Windows on it, with, you know, a U two USB ports and a, a million more features, and a keyboard, of all things, and a hard drive. Uh, so I think iPad 2 is going to have different form factors. They'll probably have a $300 iPad. Maybe maybe a three smaller one. I think they'll have a three hundred or a three ninety nine. My gut tells me. I don't know what is the cheapest iPad now. Is it three ninety nine or four? somebody in the chat room tell us? But um, $4 is four ninety nine the cheapest still? So I, I mean I think these things have to get to one ninety nine, two ninety nine, mm. and I oh god how do I say this? Hmm. I was talking to somebody in the industry <laughs> who will be a player in this space, mm -hmm. and I said to them, you know, smartphone space and also. Um, iPad space. And I said, is it not true that we're getting to the point where a smartphone is now getting to the cost of which it could be, uh, the cost of it could be deferred by the advertising revenue within it? Mm. And they said, well, these new phones, you know, the, the you know, entry level smartphones cost 150 to make. So 150 you have it for 30 months. That's really not that much. It's $5 mm -hmm. a month. So if I had, if Groupon it, Groupon could give you a $150 phone and say, buy one Groupon a month, and you can have this phone free. Now there's an idea. That's interesting, yeah. Insights from Jason. <laughs> well, I, I need a theme song that's business ideas from Jason. <laughs> God, they'd, be, they'd be going <laughs> off every five minutes, but Jason. But there's an idea, right? But Okay, so now expand that. You have a, let's say you have a cost per click ad network. I don't know who's got one of those, but some people have those. <clears throat> Google. Um, Maybe you could give a phone away for five, $5. If an average click on a mobile click is 25 cents or 50 cents, we're talking about 10 or 25 clicks, maybe 15. So if the person clicks once every other day on an ad, that pays for the phone. Hey, if the phone becomes worth seven, if, the, if those phones get made for 75 or 100 dollars, maybe they've only got to click on five ads a month to make it free. And then you can just use it on Wi-Fi. I mean, it's going to get really interesting. And I think tablets, it's quite possible somebody could come out with a $200 tablet in the next year. 
And that means within three years or four years, there'll be a $100 tablet. You start getting to a $100 tablet, these things are starting to be sold in 7-Eleven, mm -hmm. like throwaway phone cards, and they're just going to change the, the mm -hmm. face of the Internet. So I think that's why I'm so big, bullish on video and stuff like that, and because tablets just... And anybody who's got a tablet or a smartphone knows they use the internet as much when they're away from the computer as they do on it. Sure. I mean, do you? How Absolutely. often do you use your iPhone? Uh, Constantly. All the time. Right. I mean, if, if you have any downtime, if you're online at Starbucks, if you're in the bathroom, wherever you are, like in your car, driving on the 405, you're checking your email. I watch people. I'm driving no, on the 405, totally and I'm watching people this. on their iPhones. <laughs> I do it's the crazy. same. I do the exact same. All right, Kathy. Thanks for the news. It's uh, a great pleasure to have you with us. Great pleasure to have Mailchimp in our life. Oh, Mailchimp! I'm gonna do it. What? You guys Killing are taking Kathy yourself so here. serious. Give us one, Tyler. Give us an. <laughs> e -E. No, Tyler's too no. too different. Hey, thanks, Anthony from Squarespace for being on the program. Thanks, Sean, for a great ask. Ask, ask, Jason. Thank you to producer Rob for getting your sh sugar together and actually put booking some good guests. I like that. Um, hmm. Thank you, Stream. Because those guys are awesome. Uh, hey, and they're sponsoring um, Ustream and MailChimp. Got my back at the uh, lunch conference. Cool. Microsoft and Trotter got my back. It's nice. going to be awesome. Uh, so we'll see you all next time on This Week in Startups. That's what it's all about, man. Hey, shit. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't going to live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you.